Lesson 8, Interactivity Basics Review. A huge benefit of digital design, as opposed to print design, is the dynamic nature of digital output methods. Digital designs allow for significantly more interaction between a user and a design. Interactivity in a digital design is defined as the interaction between a user and the design elements they are viewing. When a user gets to activate content or modify their user experience, they become more engaged with the design they are interacting with and they are more likely to continue to be engaged with the design. Static print designs can be combined with digital interactivity, but on their own, without the addition of any digital technology, it is not possible for print designs to achieve the same level of interaction that digital designs can. Interactivity is a key component of user experience design. UI and UX are methods used to produce digital designs that emphasize the user. A goal of UI and UX is to make users' experience easy, clear, and enjoyable. It is frustrating to not know where to go or what to do next. How many times have you been on a website or in an app and you can't find something? Have you watched a parent or a friend try to navigate a design and get frustrated and just give up? Interactivity can be used to support users' experience in many ways. For example, thought bubbles can be added with instructions for users who may need help navigating a design, or buttons that need to be clicked can be animated to draw attention to them. Interactivity can be used in many ways to make digital design easier to navigate, clearer to understand, and more enjoyable to experience. The world of digital design is vast and ever-growing. There are many different software applications that can be used to create varying forms of interactivity for a digitally output design, like Adobe InDesign, Adobe XD, Figma, and more. The key is choosing the right program for your design needs. In this lesson, we'll focus on interactivity that can be added via Adobe InDesign. However, you may find your design needs require the use of additional programs. Always work backwards. Make the best decision for your goals and for your designs and for your users. Don't pigeonhole yourself into using one software application. Decide what is needed for you to accomplish your goals. Then choose a software program that is best for it. InDesign can be used to create interactivity that works well with page layout designs, but it may not always be the best option for all forms of interactivity. Let's start our InDesign interactivity review with the EPUB interactivity preview panel. This panel can be used to test interactivity from within InDesign. It is important to note the EPUB interactivity preview panel will only test interactivity that is compatible with EPUBs, so you need to make sure you are always testing your interactivity both in InDesign and in your final output destination. We'll focus on interactive PDFs and InDesign publish online projects in this lesson, which means all forms of interactivity will need to be tested either as an exported interactive PDF in Adobe Acrobat or on the web after the file has been published online before we can call our projects complete. Depending on the type of interactivity you are testing, you may want to preview the interactivity on one page or all pages within your design. Always check the preview mode options in the bottom corner of the EPUB interactivity preview panel before testing your design. If your interactivity requires multiple pages to interact, like when creating buttons for navigation, you must select the option to preview in document mode as opposed to spread mode. When in doubt, always use document mode so you're testing all pages and not just one. Next, to activate your interactivity, you must press the play preview button in the bottom left corner of the panel. The panel is quite small by default. You may want to drag a corner of the panel to make it bigger. Once the play preview button is activated, you can test your interactivity via the panel. In this example, I'm able to roll over a button to see that the rollover changes the way I am intending it to. I can also click the button to navigate to the next page. Next, let's review the six forms of interactivity that were covered in ART 1200 in design software. They are URL hyperlinks, buttons for navigation, object states, basic animation, embedding HTML codes for YouTube videos, and rollover states. Hyperlinks are added via the hyperlinks panel. They can be applied to objects or text. 
InDesign is able to create six types of hyperlinks, URL, file, email, page, text anchor, and shared destination. Let's start slow by creating a basic URL hyperlink. A URL hyperlink is an object or text that navigates to a web page when clicked. It is usually indicated as blue underlined text, but it doesn't necessarily need to be formatted that way. The steps required to make a URL hyperlink in InDesign are as follows. First, select the object or highlight the section of text that will become the clickable hyperlink. Go to the internet and literally copy and paste the full URL for whatever destination you want your users to navigate to. Include the https colon slash slash part at the beginning of the URL. Next, open the hyperlinks panel via the window menu. Choose Window, Interactive, and then Hyperlinks. Do not paste your URL on the surface of the panel. Instead, use the Create New Hyperlink button at the bottom of the Hyperlinks panel to launch the new hyperlink dialog. The settings for a URL hyperlink should be set to Link to a URL, and then paste your URL in the URL field. Uncheck the Shared Destination option, and then use the bottom half of the dialog to automate the formatting of text for hyperlinks so that they're blue and clickable. You can also add alt text to your hyperlink for accessibility purposes. After your hyperlink is created, you should check it via the EPUB Interactivity Preview panel. Make sure the hyperlink navigates to the correct web page when you click it. Buttons are a powerful form of interactivity in InDesign. They can be used to help users navigate within a design, link to a web page, add thought bubbles for instructions, activate animations, and more. Let's practice making a button for navigation. Once an InDesign user understands the basic steps needed to create a button with an action, they can experiment with the many different options available when working with buttons in InDesign. As a word of caution, not all button options are compatible with all output methods. Always test your interactivity in both InDesign and in your final output destination. Buttons are added via the Buttons and Forms panel. Launch the panel via the Window menu. Choose Window, Interactive, and then Buttons and Forms. All containers in InDesign can be converted to a button, including unassigned frames, text frames, and graphic frames. When working with the Buttons and Forms panel, you will need to choose whether you are making a button or a form via the Type drop-down menu. The first option is used to create a button. All other options are for creating forms for interactive PDFs. There are three things on the top half of the Buttons and Forms panel that need to be addressed. They are Name, Event, and Actions. Adding a button name is optional, but encouraged. When your interactivity gets more complicated, you will be able to target various forms of interactivity from multiple panels. Giving your interactive elements, like your buttons, identifiable names will help in the long run. Every button must have an event and an action. Events tell your button when to work. On release or tap is the most common. This means when someone clicks your button and then releases their click, the button will do what it is supposed to do. You can explore all of the event options by clicking on release or tap in the drop down menu that you see on screen. The action tells the button what it is supposed to do. We're going to make a button for navigation, so we want to choose an option that will help users to navigate in some way. Click the plus button to add a new action. When you do this, a flyout menu will appear with a list of choices divided into categories. If you look closely, InDesign is trying to help you see which actions work for different output types. For example, if you know you are making an interactive PDF, you will want to stay away from the section that says EPUB and Publish Online only. For our purposes, let's choose Go to Next Page. This will tell our button to navigate to whatever the next page is when it is clicked. The bottom half of the panel can be used to add rollover states. The appearance of a button can be set for the normal, rollover, and click state for each button. These are the settings for what a button looks like when it is not being used, when a user rolls over the button with their cursor, and when the user clicks a button. 
Rollovers can be set by clicking a new appearance state on the bottom half of the Buttons and Forms panel. The normal state is the state the button was in when it was created. Click on Rollover or Click to add additional appearance settings. Then, with the appearance settings selected via the Buttons and Forms panel, change the appearance of the button. For example, if you want to change the way your button looks when clicked, activate a click appearance state and then literally change the button in InDesign. In my example, I am changing the red background to be green, so when my user rolls over the button, it will change from red to green. I can check this in two ways. First, I can toggle between the two appearances via the Buttons and Forms panel. I can also test the change via the EPUB Interactivity Preview panel. As always, don't forget to also test your interactive elements in your final destination. If I'm making an interactive PDF, I will want to export to an interactive PDF and then open the PDF in Adobe Acrobat to fully test it. Object states are fun because they can be used in conjunction with buttons to target interactivity. An object state allows multiple objects to be grouped together where each object within the group takes a turn being active or visible. Object state 1 disappears when object state 2 appears, and so on. Buttons are used to determine when object state 1 disappears and when object state 2 appears. Using object states is a two-phase process. Phase 1 is to create and activate a multi-state object. Phase 2 is to use a button to target the various states within the multi-state object. Object states are activated via the Object States panel. You can open it via the Window menu. Choose Window, Interactive, and then Object States. Take some time to create all of your various object states first. In my example, I am creating a digital portfolio that displays five examples of my photography, one at a time. To set this up, I created five individual graphic frames. I placed my images in each frame, formatted them to my liking, and then stacked them in a pile, one on top of another. Now that they are all in place, I will select the stack of images and use the Convert Selection to Multi-State Object button in the bottom right-hand corner of the Object States panel to create one multi-state object. My InDesign workspace no longer shows all five graphic frames. Instead, it shows one multi-state object. You can see these five object states via the Object States panel. Just like buttons, it is a good idea to give your multi-state object a name so that it is easier to target in the future. Now that you have an object state, you can use buttons to target the object states. For my example, I would like my users to click a small thumbnail of each photograph. Clicking the thumbnail will open a specific object state in the preview area. To do this, I need to create graphic frames for the thumbnails and then place my images into the frames. Then, each graphic frame must be converted into a button with an action that targets the object states. Let's review the steps first, and then we'll jump over to InDesign and do this part of the process together. The steps to create a button for a multi-state object are step one, select the frame that will become a button. Step two, use the Buttons and Forms panel to make a button. You will need to change the button type to be a button and give your button a name. Step three, choose an event. On release or tap is usually what you'll want to choose. Step four, add an action. Choose the go to state option. This activates additional settings on the buttons and forms panel. Choose the object you wish to target and then set the correct state. There will be a small preview available so you can see which image is connected to which state. You can also go back to your object states panel and name each state to explicitly know which state is which. Step five, test your button via the EPUB interactivity preview panel to make sure it works and then repeat for all thumbnail buttons. Let's jump over to InDesign and do it for real this time. So again, for my example, I would like my users to click a small thumbnail of each photograph. Clicking the thumbnail will open a specific object state in the preview area. To do this, I need to create graphic frames for the thumbnails and then place all five of my images into separate frames. Then, 
each graphic frame must be converted to a button with an action that targets object states. The steps to do this are as follows. You will want to repeat these steps for each one of the individual thumbnails. Step 1. Select the frame that will become a button. Step 2. Use the Buttons and Forms panel to make a button. You will need to change a type to button and give your button a name. Step 3. Choose an event. On, release, or tap is usually what you'll want. Step 4. Add an action. Choose the Go to State option. This activates additional settings on the Buttons and Forms panel. Choose the object you wish to target and then set the correct state. There will be a small preview available so you can see which image is connected to which state. You can also go back to your Object States panel and name each state to explicitly know which state is which. Step 5. Test your button via the EPUB Interactivity Preview panel to make sure it works and then repeat for all additional thumbnail buttons. Note, if you click a button that targets the currently visible object state, it will appear as if nothing is happening. Make sure your button targets a state you cannot currently see when you're testing your button. My example was for thumbnails that target a large image in a digital portfolio, but if you think about it, object states that are activated by buttons can be used to create some really cool outside-of-the-box things. What if the objects are not stacked on top of one another like they are in my example? What if you click a button on one part of the page and it opens something somewhere else on the page? What if the object state played an animation or a video when it was activated? There is an animation panel in InDesign that can be used to add basic animation to objects and buttons in a digital layout. Open the animation panel via the window menu. Choose Window, Interactive, and then Animation. Starting at the top of the panel, you can give your animated object a name. I encourage you to do so. Giving names to your interactive elements makes it easier to target them with buttons in the future. The preset drop-down menu includes a list of animations that can be applied to an object. Click through them to see what they do. You won't see your object animate in InDesign, but the animation panel will play a little preview and you can always test your interactivity via the EPUB Interactivity Preview panel. You can see from the example on screen that each creates a unique form of animation. The best way to see how the presets will affect your object are to experiment and play with them. Test multiple options until you find one that you like. Some basic settings you may want to modify include event, duration, loop, and speed. These are pretty self-explanatory. The event is just like a button event. When do you want your animation to play? When the page loads? When the page is clicked on? When the object itself is clicked? Duration and loop affect how long your animation plays and if it will replay from the beginning over and over. Speed can be used to affect the transition between your animation not playing and playing. There's an option to ease the animation in and out of the design. The Properties section of the Animation panel, when expanded, includes additional settings that can be used to modify your chosen animation. They include Animate, Rotate, Scale, Opacity, and Visibility. Again, these are somewhat self-explanatory if you click through them. Animate is used to determine if your object will animate to the current position or from the current position. Rotate can be used to make your object spin while it animates. Scale is used to increase or decrease the size of your object as it animates. Opacity changes the transparency of your object as it animates. And visibility can be used to hide your animation until it animates or after it has finished animating. An easy and fun way to add interactivity to an InDesign project is to copy and paste an HTML embed code directly into your design. It really is as simple as copying the embed code and choosing Edit Paste. You don't have to add the embed code to a text frame or activate it as interactivity. Just paste the code without anything selected and wait for InDesign to work its magic. Let's try it out together. YouTube videos are a good example of embed codes InDesign recognizes. So if you go to YouTube and you find a video the user has enabled embedding for, you can right-click the video, choose to copy the embed code, and then bring it back to InDesign. Once you're back in InDesign, 
All you have to do is paste the code and wait a few seconds for it to process. There are two things you may notice that are very common when pasting HTML embed codes. You may get a visual error saying your device cannot play the video. That's okay. We know InDesign can't play the video. It can't show us interactivity. But you can test the interactivity using the EPUB interactivity preview panel, or you can test it in your final output destination. So don't worry that the video says it won't play until after you have fully tested it. Second, the embed code may not be sized properly for your layout. Embed codes are HTML codes that include the size of the contents width and height within the HTML code. You can edit the HTML code by right-clicking the embedded content and choosing to edit HTML. You cannot edit the size of the frame or the content inside the frame like you would normally do for graphics in InDesign. You must right-click the embedded content and choose to edit the HTML coding. After you edit the HTML coding, you should wait. It may take a few moments to process. After InDesign is finishing updating the code, you will see the size of your embedded YouTube video visually change on screen. It's incredibly important that you remember that you must edit the HTML code. You can scale the frame that you're seeing inside of InDesign, and visually the size of the frame will change in your InDesign workspace. However, when your project is exported, it will only display the size of the width and height inside the HTML code. So you must right click the frame and choose to edit the HTML code. After your layout is finalized, you can export your project to a number of different digital output options from InDesign. A good option that works with many forms of interactivity is an interactive PDF. You can create one by choosing File and then Export. Change the format to be an Adobe PDF Interactive. Don't get this confused with an Adobe PDF Print. Both options will make a .pdf file. However, the interactive option will optimize your project for web standards and supports many more forms of interactivity than a print PDF. After choosing to save your interactive PDF, you will gain access to the Export to Interactive PDF Settings dialog. Feel free to explore the settings available, and when you're ready, choose Export to finally create an interactive PDF. You should open your interactive PDF in Adobe Acrobat to test the functionality of your finished design. Test all interactivity to make sure it is working as intended. If something is not working, go back to InDesign, troubleshoot it, fix it, and then re-export it until you have a fully functional interactive PDF in Adobe Acrobat. A fun new digital output option from InDesign is called Publish Online. It is a way to create a digital version of your project that has a unique URL for accessing on the internet. It can also serve as a portal for others to be able to download your project as a print PDF. There's even an option to copy an embed code so that the project can be embedded onto a web page. Use the Share button on the top right corner of the InDesign user interface to access the Publish Online option. When you click the Share button, a flyout menu will appear showing various output options. Choose Publish Online. This will open a dialog prompt where you can make decisions about your publish settings. Minimally, decide whether this is a new publish or an update to a previously published project, and then give your project a name or a title and a description. Note, a key benefit of Publish Online is that you can push changes to your project, and anywhere the Publish Online is being used, it will update automatically to include the new changes. In addition, you can also adjust settings for which pages are included, aka the range of pages that are included, and whether or not viewers will be able to download the project as a print PDF and or be able to copy the embed code. If you switch to the Advanced tab, you can make further adjustments, like choosing a project thumbnail and adjusting image quality settings. The default image quality settings tend to work for text and vector art made directly in InDesign. I have found raster images will blur slightly, so if I include raster images in my project, I usually change the resolution quality from 96 to 144 pixels per inch. After you have reviewed all of the possible setting choices, finalize your Publish Online project by pressing the Publish button. It may take a few minutes to process. 
When your project is ready to be viewed, you will see an option to view the document. Select this option to launch your published online project in an internet browser. The options to download your project as a print PDF and to copy the embed code can be found in the lower right corner of the project. Just like with your interactive PDF, you should click through your entire project and double check to make sure the interactivity is working the way you have intended. If something is not working, go back to InDesign, troubleshoot it, fix it, and then